my involvement and other people's involvement just kind of serves to inspire one another. It's always been how do we involve the community, how do we be welcoming to all. I feel very strongly that what I'm doing is important. I feel like with the teachers and the administrators, they've they've got my full support. Most of the people that I talk to, I just naturally educate them about trans issues because no one, a lot of people just don't know about trans issues. What is the GSA? Why do you add a cue to it? They are opening their minds to things they haven't thought about before. I am encountering a lot of people that I love dearly and they've become my peers and everybody else can either like it or lump it, pretty much. <laughs> what I think is really important for individuals and in turn for, for institutions is to use their time, their talent, and their treasures for what they think is important. My school can show their support and create more events. Having a standard of language and talking about representation and gender stereotypes at an all school level instead of um, just on a teacher to teacher basis or administrator to administrator basis. Support uh, local um, GSA, QSA, Rainbow Alliances. Having a dedicated space for queer youth, be it a, you know, a room or a portable building or something that could be just for them. Trying to get come up with safe, um, loving, functional uh, families that can provide um, a safe home to children. First being really open and honest about being an ally and what that means and never shying away from conversations or teachable moments where you're actually able to address an issue that might come up in class. In the classroom, in the bathroom, in the locker room, all across the campus that they are allowed to be themselves while they're on campus. When kids say the F word in a derogatory um, way to kids that aren't even gay, they, they throw it about, around so like wastefully, they just throw it at everyone and they don't know what they're saying and I really want kids to understand what they're saying because they don't keep queer youth on their radar. Um, we're doing everything right right now, I feel, um, and I think the important thing is that we continue to do those things and we never let ourselves feel comfortable or easy or like we don't have a problem because as soon as you let your guard down is when problems with bullying and hate speech come back up. I personally discovered my queer identity when I was about 12. 17. 23 years old. By the time one is 16 or 17 or 18, the question is not am I gay or am I not gay, but when am I going to accept myself? I first started realizing my queer identity when I was in sixth grade and Britney Spears' music video, The Hit Me Baby One More Time, came out and I had a massive crush on her. And I was really embarrassed and I didn't want to tell anyone, not because I had a crush on a girl, but it, because it was Britney Spears and not like Courtney Love or Joan Jett. In second grade, we had to do a project where we drew what we wanted to be when we grew up, and I drew a mermaid. So I think that was one of the uh, <laughs> early indicators. I had um, an idea that I was different, and um, I would hear people make comments. Um, I, um, for example, you're a girl, and I'm not, I'm not understanding that uh, people would see me as a girl because I believed I was a girl. Um, and hearing that comment making me just puzzled. What would they say when I am a girl? I came out in terms of knowing my own identity. When I grew up as a little girl, I didn't know, but when I came out, I came screaming out of the closet at right around the cusp of 18, 19. Fell in love with a woman and have not looked back. It's been great. Um, in seventh grade, I heard an announcement for a club called GSA, and I decided to go because I didn't know a lot about it. And it changed my life because now I'm involved in all these activities, and I have a bunch of cool friends, and it was just a great idea. My favorite movie is probably going to be the last one I saw, which was Captain America, Rocky Horror Picture Show, The Breakfast Club, The Princess Bride, The Matrix, and The Goonies. Dancer in the Dark, paragraph 175. My favorite movie, I think, is The Breakfast Club because the um, characters in there all start off like hating each other for no reason, and then towards the end of the movie, they realize that they are so similar and they have so much in common, and they're all just trying to make it in, in, in life. My favorite movie, uh, 
I've got little kids at home, so <laughs> my favorite movie is Monsters University because because um, they never get tired of it, and Helen Mirren is in it. My favorite color probably has to be like a really nice royal blue, purple, turquoise, light pink. The me red is vibrant and full of energy. My favorite color um, is that color that the surface of the ocean turns right at sunset. My favorite color is sea foam green. Purple. Green. I'm obsessed with green right now. Magenta, that's sort of like darker purple. Turquoise blue. Purple? I just keep on. I love colors. I would have to say the rainbow because um, it's not well known, but there's not a lot of us left, but I was one of the original rainbow flag volunteers. Uh, I helped to make the two original rainbow flags in June of 1978. And so I have such fond memories. So whenever anyone asks me about a favorite color, I usually say rainbow because I remember so fondly working on those two huge flags. They were 40 by 60 and they were raised at UN Plaza in San Francisco in June of 1978 and they are the original rainbow flags. So I would say rainbow is my favorite color.